The Gauteng Education Department is still trying to accommodate unplaced pupils for the 2020 school year. It's working with schools in high-pressure zones to increase classroom capacity. The department says more than 14,000 pupils must be placed by the November 30th deadline. For some reaction, I'm joined by Skype by Rian van der Berg. He's from the Federation of Governing Bodies of South African Schools. Rian, a very good evening and thank you for your time. Good decision, bad decision. How do you feel about this? I think a desperate decision. Uh, it's, it's pretty sad that the sector is being managed through press conference and press releases. Uh, the interesting thing is that there is a problem, but there is also a problem on the other side of increasing class sizes. There's a legal framework, uh, and it's illegal to have more than 40 learners in a class for grades 1 to 40, so that uh, the MEC has a problem if he wants to increase class sizes above that level. Do, as far as you know, has there been any consultation with the school principals, with teachers as well, to, to, to gauge whether they'll be able to cope with such a load? We got wind of it uh, from a few schools yesterday that the department had meetings with the schools to, to indicate that they're going ahead with us. No necessary uh, consultation or um, you know, meetings about it, but more an information session that the problem exists and that's the solution that we have now. Mm. Um, I'm trying to see whether there is a number in any of these, uh, in, in any of these uh, statements or articles. Rian, do you know what would be the average uh, sort of increase in the number of pupils per, in, in these classrooms? Yeah, I don't think that's uh, all around the province. Uh, the, the press release uh, mentions that it, there's high pressure zones and we know of areas where high pressure is uh, being experienced. Now, I think that's the systemic problem in the province. It's, it's not an individual school's problem to take more and more learners. Uh, the norms and standards for funding and for infrastructure regulates that. It's the MEC's responsibility to ensure that there is enough schools in the province, that there are enough schools built uh, in the places where people live. So we, we have instances of empty schools and we've got instances of high pressure schools. And that's a function of real as well as perceived um, views of quality education, S schools performing better than other schools and everyone wants to vote with their feet and get into the school that is perceived to be better than the other one. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a very complex problem at this point in time. Do you see this as a failure of the online admission application process? I don't think the online admissions application process is a failure. I think the systemic issues is what uh, are, are what need to be addressed. Um, uh, enough schools, uh, population density, and not just demographic changes in, in the province. So uh, there's language issues. There's uh, uh, not enough schools, you know, capacity issues. Uh, there's the problem of uh, quality schools or schools of choice and, and even the MEC alluded to that early in October where he said most of the good schools are already full so people have to be uh, okay with being placed at, at other schools and, and I think that that is a bad narrative that's forming. Uh, mm -hmm. All schools need to be, South African schools need to be good schools in the province. Um, the online system has had its challenges but, but we believe technology is the way of the future and uh, it should work it, it should work better, but it's not technology that's the problem. It is, it is systemic issues. Now, they do say that they will be providing things like uh, mobile classrooms and, and, and taking sort of steps like that, Rian. I mean, do you see that as, as maybe going some way to alleviating the, the, the sort of overcrowding that might occur? Or, or do you see that coming with a whole host of other problems? Yeah, I do believe that the MEC is very vocal about not liking the solution of mobile classrooms. Um, so, so, but the desperation in the process doesn't get, doesn't give them a choice, um, and and that's that's what we've been saying: better planning, better uh, preparation. Uh, you don't build a school in a day or in a week. Uh, so it might alleviate the short-term problem, but the systemic issues need to be addressed. And Yveka, one thing that I want to add is this is for the 14,000 learners that have applied so far. Uh, we've got a total of 282,000 learners that have applied and 14,000 need to be placed. Mm. But we're not taking into account the usual um, influx of late registrations yeah. that open up after the original process and in January where people migrate from province to province. And so, so we're still expecting a few thousand uh, in the early stages of 2020 to be placed. So, yes, it alleviates the problem, but it kicks the can down the road. Yeah. And, and, and what does the Federation see as a, as a reasonable solution to this, then, if, if, if you've been throwing around any ideas among yourselves? Yeah, well, we've been speaking to the department uh, along the lines of management of the online system, but always saying that the, the issues are capacity, enough schools, 
in the right places. So we, we've got to be very vigilant in understanding what the demographics and density changes are. Uh, but the number one issue is we, we need enough schools. And number two is we need to increase the performance uh, and, and output of the schools that are perceived to be not good schools, uh, teacher training, uh, facilities, funding. So it's, it's, it's a host of, of problems. What we tell our schools at this point in time is uh, they should not go outside of the norms of the legal framework. Uh, it's, it's illegal to, to you know, to host mm. more than 40 kids in a class, mm. even if there's pressure and even if it makes sense that there are kids elsewhere, they've got to contact us and it's got to be a consultative process to mm. see what the solution is. There's no one size fits all and there's no uh, unilateral decision by the department. Do you know if this is a, a, a temporary solution or, or do you see, has the department indicated anywhere that, that these pupils will stay there till, till they have to move on to high school or if they are in high school till they move on to tertiary? Yeah, I think what, what is really problematic is once a learner is enrolled in a school, you know, the, the right of the learner is also paramount. Uh, you know, it's very disruptive to move from one school to the other. So that's why the initial phase, the admission phase of going to school is so important uh, and very emotive for parents. We've seen in the news that, that parents are very much uh, frustrated, uh, challenged in this process, uh, having been called to go to district offices, uh, being explained that they can appeal the decision but if there are not enough seats in the school that is a problem so it, it might be a temporary problem for for the initial phase of 14,000 learners being placed uh, and once they're enrolled I think they they have a good right to stay in that school that's why we've got to make sure that the right people per the regulations per the prioritized placement uh, is in the right school and not disadvantaging someone else well thanks very much for your time Rianne van der Berg he's from the Federation of Governing Bodies of South African Schools